In today's presentation, we will be showing the proper installation of the water pump and timing belt on a 1.3 liter Suzuki Samurai engine. We also show the proper procedure of adjusting valves. Although replacing the water pump is not required when servicing the timing belt, it is a good idea since most of the timing belt components have to be removed to access the water pump. So we'll be showing the installation of the water pump as part of this video. The items needed for installing the water pump are the water pump, water pump gasket, nuts and bolts, and a nut driver and torque wrench both fitted with a 10 millimeter socket. So let's get started. Just make sure our surface is clean of any gasket material or any paint in this case. Install our gasket. We're going to take our water pump, install it. Here we install the nuts on the studs and the bolts in the remaining holes. Now we're going to set the torque wrench at 8 foot pounds. Start by just making sure they're all snugged up. Now on to the timing belt and the associated parts. The parts needed are the timing belt, the timing belt cover, the timing belt rear cover and gasket, and associated hardware. You will also need the tensioner pulley and all the parts associated with that, the crankshaft pulley, and the camshaft pulley. The tools needed are a ratchet, a torque wrench, 10 and 17 millimeter sockets, a nut driver with a 10 millimeter socket, a pair of vice grip pliers and a pry bar. Okay, we're going to start by assembling this rear timing cover. Seal goes on the back side. Position. We'll put the grommets in. Leaves. We'll torque this to eight foot pounds. Eight foot pounds. Okay. You're gonna get the cam pulley. Lyman Dow. Lyman Dow hole. that on there. We'll take a little Loctite. We're going to put some Loctite on the bolt and we're going to torque it to 46 foot-pounds. Before we torque it, we'll just take a pair of vice grips, put it on the back side of the cam here. This is a solid cam. If you're using the hollow cam, you want to be careful not to grip it too tight. And we'll set our torque wrench to 46 foot pounds. And just 
run this all the way up, line your timing mark here up with the rear timing cover mark there. And now we are going to install the lower timing gear. We're going to install the Woodruff key. This one's a little snug, so we're going to give it a little tap. See it down in there nicely. We're going to take our timing belt guide and install it. So the bevel goes to the rear, is that right? Back, correct. And you'll take your timing gear, you'll line up your timing notch, gear notch on the key, and then you will take some Loctite on the lower bolt, and this is going to be torqued at 54 foot-pounds. We're going to take our pry bar and stick it in the back here. To lock in the crankshaft. Notice that a flywheel bolt has been installed in the crankshaft so that the pry bar can lock the crankshaft. We'll take our torque wrench, set it at 54 foot pounds. back up so the timing mark lines up with the yellow arrow on the oil pump and in this position with the crankshaft timing mark up your camshaft timing mark up you'd be on top dead center number four so now we're going to install our timing tensioner so we have our timing tensioner bracket and our timing tensioner and you want to locate the hole on there and line up the little tab in that hole. And that's what's going to actually adjust the pulley itself. And then we're going to take it and we're going to install it right on the engine. And we're going to make sure that we have the lettering so you can read it as you're standing on it. And you're going to make sure your timing marks stay lined up. Tension spring. Tension spring should be holding tension on it. I always let it kind of ride and then just kind of hold a little more pressure on there. We're going to torque this one at 21 foot pounds and this tensioner bolt at 8 foot pounds. So we're going to set our torque wrench at 21 foot pounds. A 12 millimeter socket. Notice that the technician is applying a little extra force to the tensioner before tightening the tensioner bolt. We're going to reset our torque wrench at 8 foot pounds. And I always take the spring off because it's doing nothing at this point now and it has been known to fall out and fall into the timing so I just take those out once I use it to tension it. Uh, it has no purpose after that. Okay, then we'll just take it and we'll rotate it around. Make sure line the timing marks back up to their points. Make sure they are both aligned. After you went around a few times, 
and at that point you are on top dead center number four. The tools needed for valve adjustment are a 6 thousandths feeler gauge, a 7 thousandths feeler gauge, a 12 millimeter combination wrench, a standard screwdriver, a ratchet with a 17 millimeter socket, and a torque wrench with a 12 millimeter socket. To correctly adjust valves, you'll need to understand how valves are numbered. Beginning at the front of the engine, the intake valves are 1, 2, 3, and 4. Beginning again at the front of the engine, the exhaust valves are 5, 6, 7, and 8. An understanding of cylinder numbering is also important. Beginning at the front of the engine, cylinder 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so now we're going to adjust the valves and we're on top dead center number 4, both timing marks pointing up. And on top dead center number 4, we're going to want to adjust the intake valves of number uh, 3 and 4. And the exhaust valves, we're going to want to do number 6 and 8. Okay, we're going to do the intake valves at 6 thousandths and we're going to do the ex exhaust valves at 7 thousandths. And those are cold uh, measurements. Okay, so... The lock nuts are already loose at this point. If they weren't, you'd have to loosen them. I'll adjust them so there's just a drag on there. There should be just a slight amount of drag on that feeler gauge. Then we're going to do the intake. And we're going to do on the intake, we're going to do, or on the exhaust, I'm sorry. We're going to do seven thousandths. Okay, now we'll take and we'll rotate the engine around. One full turn on the crankshaft. One full turn on the crankshaft will put this at number top dead center number one where your upper timing mark is pointing down and your crankshaft is at its original uh, mark. And then at this point you're going to be adjusting on the intake side number one and two. And on the exhaust side, number five and number seven. These four valves will be adjusted in the exact same way as the valves that were shown earlier. And then you go back and torque them, the adjuster nut at 13 foot pounds. That concludes today's presentation. We remind you that all the parts and supplies required for this job can be purchased through our website at www.lowrangeoffroad.com or by calling 801-805-6644.